Are you serious? What is going on in Egypt? Get a cup of coffee because this thing is getting ready to blow sky high. What? Mm. Let's get right to it right now. Mohammed Mercy, the fierce king, the cruel lord, is truly living up to his legend. He was only there one year. One year. But so many things he did was so corrupt. Like allowing Christians to be beheaded. Allowing Christians to be crucified in the trees for six hours. They didn't die. Just let them be nailed up there and hanging in the trees for six hours and take them down right in front of his presidential palace. Allowed Christian homes to be burnt and Christian churches to be demolished. Put three cities under martial law. Implemented Sharia law in, in, in a lot of Egypt. Fired 70 governors, replaced them with 70 Muslim Brotherhood governors. Replaced, wiped out the entire five governing generals, the generals that were governing Egypt. Just wiped them out, just, to, just dismissed them. Uh, in other words, the governing council was destroyed. I mean, so many things. Well, we've got more. On the brink, today, on this uh, July the 26th, 2013, millions of Egyptians are going to pour into the streets right after Friday prayers, folks, any time now. But there's been a breaking report coming out of Egypt. The Jerusalem... Uh, Post is reporting it that deposed Egyptian President Mohammed Mursi held for conspiring with the Hamas terrorists that are in the Gaza Strip and in Egypt. He's also being charged with murder and he's being charged with kidnapping. Egyptian authorities have detained President Mohammed Mursi for 15 days over an array of of accusations, including killing soldiers and conspiring with the Palestinian group Hamas, the state news agency said on Friday. The report came just hours before millions of Egyptians are expected to take to the streets in mass rallies for and against Egypt's first freely elected leader, who was ousted by the military coup on July the 3rd and General El Sisi. Morsi has been held by the military since his downfall, but until Friday's step by the investigative judge, he had not faced any formal legal measures. The charges related to his escape, along with other top brotherhood leaders from a prison north of Cairo back in 2011. Are you aware of that? He was in prison. Mohammed Mercy was in prison for conspiring with the with, with Muslim Brotherhood and the Hamas. But in 2011, when things were starting to get crazy there, and the mobs were in the streets to remove Jose Mubarak, he escaped from prison and became the president of Egypt in a little less in about a year later. This is an amazing rise. The only reason he could do it is because it was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 19 by God himself through the prophet Isaiah. Now, look at this. The report also states that the investigating judge, Hassin Samar, has confronted Mohammed Mercy with evidence questioning uh, during his questioning. It did not say when or where Mursi was questioned. A spokesman for the Muslim Brotherhood, which says the army has staged a coup against the democratically elected head of state, describes the accusations as ridiculous. According to Jihad El Haddad, said they mark the return of the old regime. Now, Mohammed Mursi and many other Brotherhood leaders were rounded up by the authorities during the 2011 uprising that swept Jose Mubarak from power. The accusations listed against Mursi included arson, destruction of prison records, 
and collaboration with Hamas to undertake aggressive acts in the country of Egypt, attacking police facilities, officers, and soldiers. Also, Mercy is accused of killing some prisoners, some officers, and soldiers deliberately and with prior intent. It added the accusation of kidnapping some officers and soldiers. The prosecutor has issued a gag order stipulating that the media may only publish his statements on the case, citing the secrecy of the investigations and national security. Folks, this is going to get real ugly now, real ugly. The perverse spirit is loose in the land. Now, get your Bible. Let me show you exactly what I mean and how the Word of God prophesied these ex exact events would take place. It's amazing, really, when you start looking into the Scriptures and how the prophecies are coming to pass. If you go with me to Isaiah chapter 19, we will read about the, the what's called the burden of Egypt. Um, the Bible says, and I have been reading Isaiah 18 some to try to get a handle of what exactly God was uh, speaking to us about there. And I was even asked that question by a, a wonderful couple that were visiting our church last Sunday for all those baptisms. They came out of Huntington, Indiana. So, sis, I want you to know I am studying that chapter and, and seeking the face of God. No answers as of now. Now, Isaiah 19, the scripture says, The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And we've seen this happen. As we know, there was an idol in Manchester, England, that had been taken from one of the Egyptian tombs. That, and it was this, a little idol of the god of death and the god of the Nile River. And it started spinning just as Mohammed Mercy was being removed from power in Egypt. Also, look at this. There were eight idol gods in King Tut's museum during the rise of 2011 to oust Jose Mubarak. And five, five of those, uh, eight idol gods were taken from that museum. Five were returned within a week, but three of them have never been returned. Keep that in mind. Verse 2, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Well, we've seen that and we're still seeing that. And you're going to see it today. And they shall fight everyone against his brother, everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof. We know that Muhammad Mercy did that. And they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers, there's one, and to them that have familiar spirits, that's two, and to the wizards, that's three. Three missing idols, three idol gods mentioned. And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel lord and a fierce king, Muhammad Mercy. What did he do? What's he charged with? Conspiring with Hamas, murder of prisoners and soldiers, kidnapping, imprisonment, uh, collaborating with the enemy, fierce king, cruel lord. He shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. And the waters shall fail from the sea. There's a drought right now in Egypt. Unbelievable drought. The Euphrates River has even shrunk um, in some parts of it by as much as 75%. The water tables in Egypt are down 50%. The crops harvest is down 50%. And there's locusts in the land. They showed up the first day that John F. Kerry, our Secretary of State, arrived to visit Muhammad Mercy. The water shall fail from the sea. The rivers shall be wasted and dried up. And they shall turn the rivers far away. The Ethiopian government right now is building a dam called the Renaissance Dam. And they're building it on the Nile River. And when it is complete, it will turn the Nile River away from Egypt, leaving Egypt just a small trickle 
of water from its very life source for centuries, for millenniums. Prophecy being fulfilled. How could you turn a river away from Egypt? By building a dam. It's happening. And they shall turn the rivers far away. And the brooks of defense shall be emptied and dried up. The reeds of flags shall wither. The paper reeds by the brooks, by the mouth of the brooks, and everything sown by the brooks shall wither and be driven away and be no more. And then the, it start, verses 8 through 13 talks about a total economic collapse in Egypt, which is happening right now. And every time you have a day like today of more rioting and fighting and, and dis destabilization of that country, the economy continues to tank. Go to verse 14. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his own vomit. It is happening, folks. When the people turned on Hosea Mubarak, a man who had kept Egypt thriving with tourism, with economy, with peace with Israel, when they turned on him, their nation has done nothing but it became this perverse spirit came into the land. They removed Hosea Mubarak and elevated the Muslim Brotherhood which is the perverse spirit that's in the land. And now it's just total chaos. And now that he's been removed, still the, the spirit's there. The, the confusion is still there. Are you serious? So folks today, keep a very close eye on what happens when, when millions of people will come out in protesting that they want Muhammad Mercy back and millions of people will come out uh, demonstrating also that they want Mercy to stay away. Watch out, folks. This thing could erupt in a massive, massive collision of fighting and violence right after Friday prayers. When the Muslims pray on Friday, look out, because violence always follows. What do you want me to do? It's a, peace, it's a very peaceable religion. So every time the Muslims pray on Friday, a lot of times, they come out and they fight and kill each other. It's a very peaceable religion. Can we be honest with each other? There's no peace in Islam. Zero. You know why? Because they don't recognize the Son of God. is Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Oh, they, they recognize Jesus Christ, but they want him to be some kind of a, you know, two steps off prophet. They don't want to accept him as the Savior. And that's the, that is the flaw in the entire Islamic faith. And if you're watching and you're Islamic, don't get mad at me, I'm telling you. I'm just going to help you something. Let me help you. I've read the Quran. The Quran speaks in riddles. It even mentions Mary and the virgin birth. It doesn't recognize Christ as the Messiah. I mean, go to the Surah. When you read the Surah, it, it, it absolutely is confusing. It, 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 it will say that Jesus is a prophet, but will not accept him as the Savior. And then at the turns right around and, and, and elevates... A, twist is a lots of scriptures. It's as if it's it's in a state of confusion. So, uh, really, if you're watching right now and you're not uh, uh, and you are Muslim, let's say, because we've had Muslims saved in our ministry and we're getting Muslims saved around the world with the gospel of Christ. I'm not here to offend you. I'm just telling you exactly what's happening in the nation of Egypt. I'm telling you what's happening around the world. That radical jihad is a trick of the devil to destroy the Muslim people. See, Abraham is the father of many nations, not just the nation of Israel. He's the father of all of the Arab nations of the world. The descendants of Esau, as well as the descendants of Ishmael, are still all brethren with the descendants of Isaac. And so we understand that this conflict would come about one day, and it's, it is definitely here. But if you, as a Arabic individual whether you're in America or in any other part of the world, and you're listening to this, you watching this video, and I believe you're going to be, because it's going to be sent around. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Let me help you with that. Let me pray with you. Let me, let me help lead you to this only one that can give us peace, Jesus Christ. God loves you. I'm Pastor Paul Bagley. I'm praying for you. Send me a personal message. You want to be saved. In Jesus' name.